and there we go again. It's time for the second two game series of Sefer. And this time hopefully correctly pronounced. Against Quintet. This time like the Million Wolves in the first two game series we cast it like they had twice a good start. <laughs> in the second game they brought Sefer actually down to one Rax only and yet I lost the game. Now Sefer is playing against Quintet. I think they're a tick better but we're gonna find out. My name is Heflamog and with me casting is not Coucher now. He's gone because he is casting on Hefla TV 2. Some uh, the Leaders League tournament is gonna start there pretty much soon. So for all the CIS Dota fans you can go there. And for all those who want to stay here, you have the honor with Kylie who's casting with me. And Kylie, after I said that I have to leave you alone for one minute. Oh man, just throw me under the bus here. But <laughs> yeah, we'll have yeah, we'll have Zephyr up, Zephyr up against Quintet Dota, and Zephyr's doing pretty damn good in their uh, group in JDL right now. You'd expect them to, them being in the second division and not the premier one, but so far they've only lost two matches, uh, sorry, two games, and if uh, they haven't added the last couple wins into the schedule, it's not the schedule, the standings quite yet, that makes them 10-2 and two in the group, so they're doing quite well for themselves. Fans, it's pretty predictable stuff, but well, I say that and I don't actually mean it. We do have the... Uh, the Ember Spirit ban, which you don't see very often in the first phase, and Nyx Assassin taken out by Quintet. Zephyr takes out the Batrider and Invoker. A lot more sense there, but a lot of good heroes left uh, with those two bans from Quintet. They do have the first pick, so they have, their, they have the pick of the litter, so to speak, and well, we'll see which kind of staple hero they go for here. Yep, absolutely, and I'm back already, as I promised, just one minute, AFK. The bans actually look quite similar to... That would be already casted, like Invoker, uh, Batch Rider, and a Nyx Assassin have been there, but the difference in the last game was yeah. we actually had a Doom being banned out uh, in the first ones. And yeah, Mirana first pick for Quintet, even that looks similar. Uh, we had that in the other games as well. So, so far, like compared to the first series, not too much of a surprise. Let's see what they can get through. I, I, I totally understand the, the Ember Spirit ban though for Quintet because Ember Spirit was pretty much the thing last game that, I don't know, okay. it was too, de uh, too Daedalus or Daedalai, like however you want to build that plural of that word. And it was, yeah, two Battle Furies as well. So <laughs> he was hitting for a truck, like just one slide of fist for like 1.3k crit and that all cleaved. It's like if he didn't spread all over the map, you were pretty much dead. It was hilarious. Well, yeah, I guess if it works for you, then go ahead and ban it against the other team. Sorry, if it works for the other teams, go ahead and ban it against them. No reason not to, I suppose. But, well, Zephyr thinking through their first two picks here for quite some time. They, have, uh, they are turning that bonus time a little bit here. And well, we'll see what they come out with. Um, I don't know, what, else, what did they really like to do in the previous games that you just did? I haven't seen Zephyr in a while, so... Uh, what do you mean, the picks for last game? Well, yeah, like, what, what sort of style did they run in the last couple of games? Like, uh, to be honest, like... um, well, they had once a uh, Shadow Demon Lina combination, which Lina was uh, Lina. pretty nice. Then the Ember Spirit was one part, then we had... <laughs> oh, no. no, my short-term memory is the question. Like, the fact is that they pick like a lot of different strategies I have to say that because both times like it was quite diverse to be honest and even now um, say it the Venomancer puck this is the first time we see it today at least on Zephyr's site so definitely interesting I'm, I'm actually looking it up right now uh, how that game was Zephyr the exact draft we have it in a second and Venomancer I mean he's the first pick hero uh, few months ago but he we really haven't seen that much of him recently and generally you want to pick him for just his landing presence and just try and completely throw someone off their game so you kind of need to have a plan if you pick him this early with i don't know we'll have to see if it does work out for them and how they want to use him and pop getting picked pretty early as well and i mean this is very good hero for Bambo, and looks like Blitz actually isn't here today. He can also play a decent puck. Yeah, he was Maybe replaced, not... by the way. He was replaced last game by someone from MVP Hot 6. But this is now a new stand-in or name chain. I have no idea. Like, stand-in Ja, the coach. I have no idea who that is. Maybe one of the viewers know it because uh, some of the Sapphire, fan, uh, Sapphire fans might actually no <laughs> this standing if he plays more than once with Zephyr. So, so it, well, I think they typically do like that Bambo puck anyway, so I don't think 
Blitz not being there will matter uh, will matter too much for that, but it will probably change how the bands work out. I mean, he's got some pretty signature heroes that you do want to take out of the pool, so we'll see yep. if they change their bands accordingly. And they pick up an Ancient Apparition to go with the Marana. By the way, I just supported my Shoto Memory with uh, the draft of the last game. Like, in the first game, they played um, a Magnus plus an Enigma as, like, the the big fat ultimate, like, and that whole thing surrounded with the Puck and a Shadow Demon as a carry. It was Cory on a Morphling. So, and that was an amazing game. Like, now, of course, it's all coming back now that I see the names and the heroes. Like, we had, like, a Foreman RP. We had, uh, like, a Freeman Black Hole twice in a row. They turned, actually, that game around within five minutes like uh the the wolves there they had such an advantage and everything but like after the big ultimates came out on spot they raced down that high ground that was just amazing and the second game uh was yeah dk cory on the oh, crazy ember spirit with the items i just told you bamboo on a not so successful bloodseeker and again a shadow demon and lena combination that was pretty much what they were coming up uh, today and now as you can see it already like only the puck is the only thing that is repeated so far And you're gone Sorry, I, don't know, I was changing <laughs> a mic setting that I had forgotten was set the wrong way, but there we go Yeah, um, now you have the good mic. Yeah. Yeah, here. there we go. I, yeah I I actually ended up playing Dota last night somehow surprise I don't even know how I managed that but yeah So I forgot to change my mic settings back should be much better now. So yes much better yeah. Okay, sorry for that, and, well, yeah, Ban's going through, and I do think against Zephyr, I mean, it, most of the time, I mean, Bambo is kind of the playmaker, but Corey just, every game, just carries the shit out of this team, pretty much, for the most part, and banning out his heroes is probably nice. I think banning his Morphling is something he, teams should do a bit more often. It seems, yep. it just seems like a, I don't know, it's, it's. I would say it's his best hero, it's the one he's impressed me the most on, I don't really see any reason not to ban it almost every game in, like, the second phase, and just let the other players have their heroes for the most part, but eh, I mean, I don't know. It's, I just think that's a good way to plan on it, but they'd go for a Dragon Knight here and along with the Puck and oh, some nice Disable, and they can take some nice early Towers of the Venomancer DK push combination. Yep, I actually like the push potential that's coming here for Zephyr with the Venomancer. So we have the Plague Wards as well as, the, uh, as, well as of course, then the Dragon Form Corrosive Breath that's uh, nagging on the Towers. I mean, Quintet, they still had the option to go for a train protector, maybe protecting the towers a bit, but nope, they add some push potential themselves, so Shadow Shaman. What we didn't talk about yet at all, because I was busy with the remembering the, the, the setup for the other two games, we have Rubik, SK, and a Darkseer Shadow Demon being banned out, so complete support bans for both teams, and like, yeah, one of them, or like, four of the most common supports being picked, even though the Darkseer, I had that topic with Couch already in the first games, I don't know why he is so high priority in uh, the bans at the moment, because like, if he's not getting banned, I don't see him picked either, it's, it's hilarious, but still, there's certain teams and certain drafts that just don't want to have the Darkseer against them, so I have to accept that fact. But, look at it go, Witch Dog is coming out. Yep, pretty much. And this combined with Venomancer can mean for some very aggressive laning if they want to go for it. And I certainly think they will. Maybe like a safe lane puck farming and then pick up one more here to go a bit more a bit more of an aggressive stance here. But going up against some Ron AA Shadow Shaman lane, it's not going to be the easiest thing in the world by any means. Ancient Apparition is pretty damn squishy, so is Shadow Shaman, but the Marana right clicks will certainly hurt a lot with Ancient Apparition, and Shadow Shaman's got a ton of disables if you dive too far. Yep. So, we'll see if they do actually want to do that, I or if see they just avoid. want to push. Like, <laughs> I want to see a Void. That would be so amazing. We have Venomancer, Puck, Dragon Knight, Witch Dog, everything that could bring awesome DPS in a Chrono. Where is the Void? Give a Void, please. I mean, it would be horribly greedy, but it would work. <laughs> It wouldn't be the greed. I don't know if it'd be the greediest thing in the world. They might, they might get really punished for it, yes, but I mean, it's it's not the worst situation for it. But we do see the Brewmaster. Now things get a little hairier, and well, Brewmaster is a hero. I think these four heroes are well. I mean, uh, not all four of these heroes, but Brewmaster is capable of creating space. Once he gets level six, he'll roam around, maybe looking for some kills and fights with his ultimate. Maybe give Shower Shaman an Ancient Apparition, a lane to farm up their level six and get like that first item of theirs too as well. So. I do like this Brewmaster pick. I it's always really fun to watch, and well, he's a little, been a little bit. I don't know. It's been pointed out. I, there's an article on Liquid Dota. I know, but Brewmaster's been a little, what's the word, underwhelming recently in games. And oh, you got it. There you go. Yeah, 
I Never mind what it. I was saying, Faceless Void. Yeah, no, th this was like for me the logical consequence because I'm like one of those casters who is like every time a Void is picked, not even as the fifth one, I'm like, hey guys, where is the damage coming into the Chrono? Like, and then I see like a Void plus three melee heroes and stuff like that. But mm -hmm. here, this is just amazing. You have Venom and so you have Gale, Plague Wards, Auto Attack, uh, the Poison Nova, then you have the Puck with the Orb. Follow up with the Dream Coil, you have Brief Fire as well as the Range Attack, you have Witch Talk Casket as well as, of course, the Emma's Ultimate. Off. Everything goes into the Chrono. All you need in this game, get the awesome Chrono up. That's all you yeah. need. Then this the fight is pretty much over. So, But if you get it through, or if the, if the Void is getting focused down or disabled somehow, that's the question in this game. So they decide, I mean Quinted now, they decide to go for a, a Timber Saw, which is not the worst choice because Chakram goes into the Chrono. So let's see. It's definitely yeah. a nice draft on both sides. Uh, it, I think it comes a bit down to if that Brewmaster is snowballing, how his early and mid game is, is going to be. I think that's a bit the crucial, yeah, the crucial point in this game. They'd certainly, like to, they'd certainly like to shut down the Void as well here, but running, I mean, both both teams have trial and so you really don't want to necessarily fight into under their own towers and things like that, so I do think the Void should do okay with the help of the Venmancer and the Witch Doctor, but it looks like Timber is heading bottom, so we shouldn't see any sort of aggressive tri lane shenanigans uh, from Quintet, so Void yeah. should have a pretty simple start here. And, yeah, now that you talk about the Void, we have Corey here on the Void, then followed by Perch on the Venomancer. Eosin is playing the Look at It Go, Witch Doctor, and, yeah, in the mid, Ja, the stand-in. As I said, I don't know him, but some viewers said, like, he already played uh, with Perch or as a stand-in. As I said, I don't know, I'm not too familiar uh, with all their potential stand-ins. Fact is, Blitz is not here, for all those who ask, and Sexy ba Bamboo, last but not least, he is... Um, on the pack in the offline and just one more thing if you are asked like if the cast is European yes I am European I'm some sort of uh, Canadian German mix living in Hungary and my co-caster today is Kylie and he is as American pure, as you could be pure-blooded American <laughs> and yep on the side of Quintet the Malaysian squad we've got Kaseki up on the Marana in the top lane gonna be supported by uh, Sid on the Ancient Apparition as well as JKR on the Shadow Shaman, and heading towards the bottom lane is D uh, June on the Timber Saw, and last but not least, going down the mid lane is Sleepy. Oh, but look at the harass damage already coming out by Sexy Bamboo, the orb damage, the right clicks. Oh my god, this might actually be enough, but now there's the shackle coming and the cold feet. If they proc, they might actually oh, turn Bambo, this around. Bambo. Two more hits required, oh. and the orb. There's the first blood, but the revenge. The projectile is just following him. So 1-1 one, one trade, but he has the advantage, of course. He got the bonus gold from the first blood. Amazing. Just that beautifully was, done. That was that was classic Bambo. Almost I mean that, that was that was one one last hit away from being a complete and total disaster for him instead. But well, it pays off for him in the end by by just basically by a thread. So nicely played by a Bambo and he'll head up to that top lane with a little bit more XP. He has that phase shift now and well, gotta be feeling pretty good about himself. Yep. Um uh, open your mic in Dota TV. There's some people who watch oh. it on stream and Dota TV. So, yep, your mic is, I think, so. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I always forget as well. Like, my there focus is always on the stream, not on Dota TV. But yeah, of course, some people are watching on Dota TV. So, yeah. for them, of course, mic is open now. Either way, let's see how it goes. 1 1 stand. I, I love it. Like, that is a fast start. Like, in the second game, for example, we actually had. I don't know how much was it, I think four, five, maybe even six minutes into the game we still didn't have a first blood, which is, yeah, disappointing even from a casting point of view as well as of course uh, watching a game. And then it had like, like once it started then suddenly it took a amazing pace, like multiple uh, kills on several lanes at the same time even, so yeah, hashtag split cam needed. But yeah, let's see. This time they started earlier. I hope they don't fall back into some horrible farming game. But it doesn't look like it. Here in the mid, some heavy harasses come and fall from back. I mean, uh, just look at this. I mean, both teams want their level sixes pretty badly in that first couple of items. I mean, I guess that's almost always the case. But this is more. This is definitely more passive than most games I've ser I've seen recently. And well, look at the way things are right now. Void has the fairy farm lane, so he's feeling pretty good about himself. Or his puck is still trying to hang around top. And still finding some XP. This uh, radiant offlane just so much easier to use so far. I mean, he's just he's way closer to his own tower. He's living the life here, and well, Corey is also living the life. He's farming quite well so far. Probably gonna go for that Midas. 
Yep, absolutely. And the viewers demanded oh. your name in the title, but in the meantime, while I did that, they get a puck kill here easily done. That was the arrow combination and the cold feed. Easy kill on the puck, so Sexy Bamboo after his nice start, he's pretty much, yep, losing his offline. Yeah, he's been using his phase shift pretty liberally to dodge, um, to dodge, oh god, I can't even think of auto attacks, there we go. So, that does leave a bit more vulnerable to arrows and things like that if he gets caught out of position, and you know, it might happen again, here comes yep. the Shadow Shaman. With the Shackle, they have an easy setup, and oh my god, now he's in a really awkward position. He They're coming already in. He can try and orb out here, and he will give that a little, give that a little shot here. And Bambo, oh nice, oh arrow attempt but will be grabbed arrow. by the Witch Doctor, but no, I'm sorry, the Shadow Shaman, as Witch Doctor gets a kill. Very confusing. Bambo, can you find another they orb here? This. Yep, easy, easy kill there. I mean, I don't know why he didn't wait for the arrow after the shackle, but in the meantime, actually, we had a kill that was going. Uh, the Witch Doctor actually got a kill on. Um, say it, on the brewmaster in the mid so as I said multiple action on multiple lanes at the same time hashtag split cam please that's oh, it's hard man well witch sucker was he, did he gank solo that I mean that's I guess okay I guess not it looks like purge may have gone with the gale as well so yep. maybe he was not alone there so All but right, the fact like, remains like ja has now of course the advantage in the mid he is like I had in experience as well as uh no actually yeah, he is still free in CS ahead of the Brewmaster. So Brewmaster is keeping himself still in decent position regardless of that uh, death he just got there with the Witch Dog rotation into mid. So it's it's quite fine. I mean, we have an 18-1 versus a 23. And now oh, he slows race him. Race for the rune. Yeah, the race for the rune. Who's faster? The Dragon Tail bitch slap, pretty much. <laughs> and uh, he has to go back. So, yeah, Dragon Knight being the successful one. But look at it. Bamboo is bringing a creep wave in here. The Shadow Shaman not pursuing. They have both brown boots. Who's actually the fastest one? A puck would be 345 and the Shaman would be 335. So yeah, he has no chance to actually catch up on him. Shadow Shaman is a ridiculously slow hero. It's yep. actually absurd. A Bambo is Oh, you can go Okay, you're back. Okay. I was gonna say, well you're walking pretty far forward there, buddy, but Well, he's back in safety. Bring that creep wave back around to the Okay. I thought he was gonna take that under the tower and just try to farm it there, but instead he pulls it back into his own creep wave, so I guess it'll help push it a little bit and a bit more sustained yep. experience, so that should work out. And Corey has got his Midas done in before five minutes in the game. Yep, the full greedy build coming, like a five minutes Midas, that's a beautiful timing. I mean, it couldn't be faster, well it could be faster, but like he didn't hit, like miss much of the CS, probably, yeah, I mean look at him, he got like a 36-17 CS stats at the moment, and yeah, fast Midas, that means, yeah, PTs, gonna be finished I guess pretty soon with the next two creep waves if he doesn't miss a CS and then he's pretty much ready to fight he got the chrono but now in mid we have a rotation this here Jaw might be in a lot of trouble here Sleepy coming in front of the clap as well yeah no way out of this one courier no courier don't die <laughs> courier. oh the cast will save the courier so good job by Aos and I guess there for just pulling out that little save but uh well Nice kill middle. They did require four heroes, but they do kill off the Dragonite who, like you said, was having a pretty good time mid lane. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty much the revenge kill. Like, that little advantage the Dragonite had, uh, not just from getting the rune, of course, winning that nice rune race, also from getting uh, the kill on the Brewmaster. Like, now, it's it's pretty much the perfect revenge. And Quintet is leading by two kills, so at the moment, it's, it's all good for Quintet, but then again, like, the, on the horizon, on the farming horizon, there is still like Sunshine Cory with an amazing farm and so far nothing is contesting that like he has oh there is it oh nice chrono catching chrono. a mid timber chain and well when he comes out he won't be able to keep going so one more last hit Cory finds it so yeah nice it's solo just kill. like a big bonus creep just coming your way pretty much it I really mean, is yeah it is like he's farming all the way but I think we have a go here on the pack or oh, a haste rune on the rasta one, two, three, there's the Shackle. Arrow oh, is on cooldown, but it should be enough, yeah. Ethershock is securing the entire thing. Mid lane, so though, what a cask! Oh, they oh, almost got the ultimate. ultimate cut off. Oh, that was so close. But, this well, they do force him to pop an ultimate, you can't really do anything with it. Yep. Yeah. This is actually the amazing thing about a uh, uh, Pandaren. Like, when you have that nasty debuff here, this level 2 Maledict already, which is, by the way, interesting. Like, usually, like, all the Witch Dogs I've seen and casted in the last couple weeks uh, may be 6.8 or 6.81, uh, doesn't make any difference. Um, they went for the Voodoo Restoration build because it's such an awesome spell. The mana, uh, mana compared to heal efficiency is just amazing on that spell. 
But yeah, he's going for the Maledict build, so it fits Sapphire's playstyle. Full greedy, full fighting at, at a certain point, so let's see how this works out. But I think we might have a go here on the Timber, but he should be able to get away. There is a level 2 Timber Chain, yep, yeah, and he's back to the tower. Yeah, but he's having a pretty sad time, and this is one of those offlaners that can't fall back to the jungle to really farm his way back to victory. He kind of is forced to sit in the lane. He's level four and a half, roughly, and oh, he's got a bottle, which does delay your actual like arcane boots, which you do want for the uh, mana pool, just because your spells. I mean, you want to be spamming them constantly, and then once you get level six, you start throwing out chakrams. It's pretty mana intensive once you get that, and then I don't know, you do run through your spells pretty damn quickly because the cooldowns are so damn short. So. The bottle yep. is decent, will help him sustain in lane, but we'll need those arcanes before he can really help fight anywhere. But he's got a long way to go. That's the thing with Timber Saw, he takes a while to get online. Oh, Bamboo again caught out. The Hex is coming right after the Shackle. There's a double Star Storm as well as the Arrow. Oh, sexy Bamboo. To be honest, it's not his day today. Like, he had some nice plays in both of the games already casted, but also some very questionables, uh, question, uh, questionable decisions and situations where I thought, like, that's a bit too aggressive. Like on his Bloodseeker, for example, it, we really had him some awkward position. But now in the mid, oh my god, there's the Maledict actually up on the Brewmaster. He's going down. damage taking through? Yeah, th um, one more tick. We'll get him. Yep. Yep. He's going down. Then the next tick was so huge, but Timbers are. Oh, ah! The pre fire directly before he has the chance to Timber Chain away. Too bad. So in the end, Dragon Knight doing so well at the moment in the mid. Like, yep. With this level 6 ultimate still being up, they get this tier 1 tower. I mean, there's a cliff available, but who wants to rotate? That's the question. Like, the support, the try line here, they are staying on their lane. Maybe even trying to put up some pressure for themselves here. Yeah, the mass and wards are coming out, but in the mid, the tower is actually going, yeah, to the Dragon Knight. So, Dragon Knight is going to be super rich sooner or later, as well as the void farming. Now, Quintet, they take at least the top tower. I mean, not yet. Also, the Radiant Cliff has been used, and now it's all about... Yep, Shadow Shaman is getting the last of there with his Master Up and So, Tier 1, Tier 1 trade. The difference is, though, Quintet lost two heroes on the way. Yeah, and Quintet, I mean, they take the they take the offlane Tier 1, which actually makes farming up here for supports and maybe Puck a lot easier, honestly, whereas Zephyr grabs a mid lane tower, which is far more important as far as the map control is concerned and just TPing the fights and things oh, like that. Look, oh, Ambo, sexy bamboo. not again. I mean, he has one more phase shift, he has Dream Coil, just in case, but Brumaster also has his ultimate, but he finds an invisibility, are you nice kidding Nice phase me? shift, dodging that Timber Chain damage, and, uh, well, you should be just fine here. We're gonna go ahead and get that free Bottle Charge as well. Yeah. Mech use the Coil here. Oh, no, just the Dragon Tail will come through. Easy awkward. kill. Awkward. Very awkward. <laughs> Bambo, man, he's, he's the master He's the master of fading, man. I, I just said a naughty word by accident, but it's fine. And now, Dude, there's that Chronosphere the combo. combo. There we go. That's what we like to see. Exactly. That's that's what I've been talking about in the draft. Easy going. Like him alone. I mean, it's it's actually hard because the panda had quite some HP. That would have never been enough. But that would have been a brief fire sooner or later. There was a orb ready, and of course the witch, ma uh, witch doctor, witch master. What the hell? What am I saying? The witch doc coming with his ultimate. Such an easy kill. Just imagine this happening later in the game. Maybe with the Arganum scepter and multiple heroes in that chrono. It's just a beast of a combination. That Witch Doctor name, you should... I, I did a game yesterday where I had uh, Wraith King and Witch Doctor, and I kept saying Witch King and Wraith Doctor, and just like stupid <laughs> combinations like that. It was, it was just the worst. Sometimes I just... Uh, oh, God, I can't even but look, it, but they want this so bad. Moonlight Shadow, but unfortunately the dagger is still missing. With the dagger, that would have been an awesome initiation, yeah. but this way... Oh, oh, Corey gets hexed up, but only level 1 hex, not going to do too much, and Shadow Shaman going to get feasted by the Maledict. Boulder Toss will come in from the uh, bear, and actually the Cold Feet Stun will come because of it, so they actually might find Jaw here, but not quite. T uh, Timber Saw actually getting stunned mid uh, animation there in the Timber Chain, but they will actually finally catch up to the to the Dragon Knight. Cask flying through, some of these heroes for a nice long time, but probably not going to be enough to save Aosin. He's running into the jungle, and he's going to just try and worm his way out of here. Oh, he just keeps, he just keeps on, <laughs> just keeps on juking, but uh, well, oh my god! He doesn't have level six yet, though, so he can't throw a shock from. So Asen continues to run. And no, it's ridiculous. No and trunk and haze. Oh, there's that crit. That's why I hate this build. Like no trunk and haze, but sexy bamboo. Oh my god! Yeah, he was hanging around a bit too long, maybe trying to help out his buddy, but I think that uh, was a bit of a lost cause there. Oh, there's a blink done on this dragon knight who just <laughs> blinks forward and annihilates that uh, timber saw, but oh, oh. What I is that? may have just DC'd, but... No, it's the server. 
God. It's the server. Southeast Asia. Southeast Asia. Yeah, but like the Plink deck on a Dragonite was now absolutely surprised. I think the I, Timber, I, the Timber I didn't, didn't I don't see. I think they expected it either. That was no, insane. He didn't see that one coming at all. So, I don't know. What a fight! Like, what a four from back. It's actually, I don't know. It's, it was a bit greedy because that Moonlight Shadow. It it kind of failed now. Reload. It has full duration. So the Pandaren ulti by now it it should be less. So that's the direct. Oh, there we go. Yeah, there we go. That's but the, that's the... Oh actually, my God. Jaws not gonna die this time. Maybe. <laughs> well, that changed the game. Aosin does eat it in the face, but not the worst deal for them. And well, that worked out better for Zephyr than it was previously. Well, I guess it's not over yet. Brewmaster stolen the chase, just chasing this puck around in circles. <laughs> Jaws just blinking around like a madman, trying to find out they do but not gonna find him. And well, Brewmaster cleans up the Venomancer on the other side with help of the Shadow Shaman. So, yep. end of the day, 9 8. So, in the end of the day, actually, this fight now suddenly went. Oh my god, Jaw, you crazy. What are you. Wow. That was greedy. That was a Bambo play, and Bambo's there too. So, I guess, well, alright. Yep. Never mind. So, a fight that was originally in favor for Sapphire suddenly turned <laughs> around, and we have uh... a. <laughs> 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 Eosin. The future has changed! It surely oh, has. <laughs> Jaws. He just felt it was right. He died previously. He's like, all right, I'm just going to go blink into four heroes and die. So, an honorable man. No one ever said he wasn't. And well, Cory yep. is by himself here. Going to go and throw out the chrono and just run away. He yeah. has no other option. This is an escape chrono. The cold feet didn't proc, but oh, the ultimate. Pretty crafty spot uh, used by Aosin, but then the Marana's going to clean him up as well. And the wards have been going to work on this tower the whole time. But here comes uh, Jaw, the coach. Turns on his ultimate along with the stun. Gonna get some kills here. Finds at least one with the help of the puck. Bambo oh. cutting off the escape route of the Marana. She will go down. Yeah, she's boxed in. No chance triple whatsoever. Kill for, how did Corey get all those kills? Yeah. the ward farm too. Triple kill for the already very well farmed. Uh, say it. Void. <laughs> yeah, and he's going for go. Mask of Madness. And just he had a void in my brain. right now. So normally, so you do see an Aghanims at some point on. Pretty much every void at some point, but it's all about whether you go for some damage first or not before getting it. He has gone for Mask of Madness. I think that's mostly enough. I don't think he needs another damage item before going Aghanims, to be honest. Yep. And I don't know, are these are these crafts now accurate? Because they show like what? No, they don't show anything. They don't sh even show any kill events whatsoever at the moment. I I don't no. think we can trust these. No. I don't think we can trust these, but either way, now after the reload, Volvo, etc., everything was down, and it is 12-11. The fight was changed, and it was actually changed in favor for Quintet, but right after they had... Oh, the Perch. What are you doing there? But the Thunderclap didn't slow him, but the arrow... Oh, it connects, and it's a long stun. One, two, three, and he's going down. That was a very awkward position here to go here in that pocket. I don't know. He really wanted the ward. He wanted the ward so badly, and he did, yeah. I guess, but... But look at Bamboo. Bamboo with the invisibility rune. There is no sentry whatsoever. Maybe on the AA? No, nobody got any detection. There it is. Dreamcoil on two. Now the Dragonite. Oh, there's the brief fire, and... Oh, my God. Casket. Nice cask. Yep. Casket fun. Yep. Nice little invis use uh, by Bambo. They're getting the two supports and just... Just melting them utterly. Arrow will find and does hit Bambo, but Rana's like, well, I'm gonna leave anyway, I think. Aosin just healing his bro up, and there's the Blink Dragon Tail, <laughs> and then the ultimate to follow up as well, and... Oh yeah, yeah, this Blink, yeah. just Blink Dragon Knight, like, like, I mean, normally you don't really get that stun off without your ultimate on, but, I mean, with the Blink Dagger, I guess you can kind of stun anybody. Yep, absolutely. The problem is Mir Mirana had uh, the leap still three seconds while she was going for that play, so not not the best one. So I think Sapphire, like Bamboo, is gonna do some Bamboo plays here in the mid, but meanwhile in the top, Cory, like having his eyes already on that tier 1 tower, and let's see if he gets it or if Quintet is actually going for a rotation. There would be a cliff available, but Perch is there as well. Yep, now the play quotes are coming out, but maybe, yeah, Bamboo, there's a Many, many people, Bamboo. He's creating space. Nice dodge yeah. with the phase shift, dodging the clap, so... Easy tower for Cory, and that'll be his Aghanims as well. Yep, in the meantime, tier 1 tower is down and a faceless void. Jesus Christ, his farm, 10k. Oh, Bambo, not this time, maybe? Oh, well, he'll make it out. Yeah, that's good fun, but Ice Blast not hitting. Oh, the ultimate is coming out. Why do he... 
That was like the most casual ultimate pop ever seen. He just he thought about it for like five seconds. It's like, all right, I'll just I'll use it. It's it's okay. But did he cast oh. it while the casket was coming out, and he just did not interrupt it? And when the casket sun fade, it was still going through. I don't that would think be my so. Guess. I think he just I think he just did it I, really late for some reason. Shashan will get the tower with the wards, but well, Verona, she's just straight up dead. And well, Dragonite trying to chase down this ancient apparition does have that blink dagger, so. Yep, it uh, might actually work, it, but no, he's not pursuing it, which is probably the, the, the smartest decision because there might be a wraparound. So in the end, well, the tower goes down. Was it actually a deny? No. Uh, Shadow Shaman is getting the tier 1 tower goal, and, well, Corey is farming away, as in farming the Master of Rewards, as well as the Creep Wave. And now, well, look what he what he's built. Arcanum Scepter coming out. Like, we have the Mask of Madness already, as well as 1,300 gold on top of it. And, of course, like, the Midas is already ticking since 5 minutes. This was a 5 minutes Midas, super fast. And, of course, that shall give him the advantage he needs. I mean, his farm is just insane. 11k, and maybe we're gonna see it here on the Pro Master. There's the Chronosphere, and there's the external damage I've been talking about. Yeah, easy kill on the Pro Master there. So, Cory, now 11.2k advantage. And... Sorry if I foresee this now, but Refresher Orb Inc. Like, he has such a troll advantage now, so I'm guessing there will be more, but... He certainly Perch. can. Oh. Perch. It's, he's, he's, he's warding again, dude. He's, yep. he's the most aggressive warder in the history of Dodo, and we'll, we'll see Bambo. He tries to get out, but the Shackle will grab him. Arrow's gonna hit Bambo, and well... But from behind, there is Cory, but Cory without ultimate, that's a bad idea, especially if you have Mask of Madness on. <laughs> it's just scouting, it's fine. That yep. Mask of Madness move speed scout. <laughs> no, like, I mean, the problem is with, with Voids, that, like, they they always think they're really strong because of the Chrono, but then once you get them without the Chrono and without Time Walk and Mask of Madness on, they melt. They melt like ice in the sunshine, that's for sure. But now we have a Counter Smoke here. It is only Eosin and Ja here, but I mean, I say only, it's still a lethal combo because this one is already Maledict, level 4, as well of, as, of course as Brief Fire, the Dragonite Ultimate, everything is ready. Alone this combination, alone the Maledict damage will bring down one target over time, and yeah, but they won't find anything. This dust is gonna run out before they find anything. Quintet, actually, look, there's, they're in their base. They're like, yeah, they're just okay. kind of hanging. Uh, yeah, this was now know. scouting ancient apparition ultimate, which was, I don't know for what that was supposed to be, but we have a new smoke, like sexy bamboo. This is a new smoke now again scouting, and they're heading towards mid. And there they might be successful finding something. Prumas is here as well as AA and the Rasta, and now there are two already. Two are following them, but they are directly on top of Observer Ward. Blink Coil Silence on a couple of heroes. Bambo probably gonna find one kill right off the bat. Brewmaster will throw out the clap. Dodge by the phase shift, so one kill already found by uh, by Bambo. But he'll just go ahead and back yeah. off and, well, they just don't need to fight. This is now another Panda ulti. Baited out. And now for the defense of this tower, they don't have it. But Sapphire, they have this funny spell. It's called Chronosphere. Also, of course, empowered by Iconum Scepter. So they have all the means they need to just go for this tier 2 tower. I think Quintet, the wisest choice would be to abandon this tower. They can't fight yeah. right now. 90 I, seconds still on the Brewmaster ult to hit. I, this, I don't know, I don't want, I, this Brewmaster is not, like, this is one of those things where you, well, Dyer's Courier died. Oh, Jaw just got it, alright, well, Corey, maybe throw out the Chrono here, maybe right-click instead, but no, nope, decides to just let the, uh, he shows mercy on Timberstone, so, yep. he'll make it out, but, I mean, it's, this Brewmaster has been probably the least effective Brewmaster I think I've ever seen. I don't know, it's like, you can't just, pick him and screw around with it you need to like make use of your ultimates every single time you use it or else you're gonna fall behind because that's just all the hero is really there for and unless you can like win your lane really hard for some reason with just clap spam but yeah it doesn't typically happen i don't know it's it has not been a good game for him oh and there perch the warding is coming like i mean there's a lot of server wards out at the moment for quintet they have one here they had one here in this entrance which pretty much gave away that they were coming not that it helped anything they still died there in dream core and the brewmaster ultimate was baited oh my god now oh, the mirana what she's doing here like yeah she's so I, dead I, now I, oh, but i killed bamboo nope not quite oh, oh seven hp i thought bamboo and that ice pass is also gonna be off target. He should have aimed that in the direction of the fountain. But yep, yeah, too bad. What I wanted to say is though, the, the Rasta at least used the time very well while they were pushing the tier 2 in mid, because with the Rasta wards here, he got the tier 2 in the bottom lane. So, I mean, 
it, it's a small disaster actually for Quintet what happened in the last two three minutes but then again at least they got this one tower now counter warding purge your wards are not holding for too long but here this one it's unlikely it's oh god I was just about to say it's unlikely it's getting spotted out but he's choosing uh, this position for de warding which is interesting usually we see it around here just to make sure there is no ward here or sometimes we even so see wards here but yeah nice position by the AA nice gas so purchase wards both observers are going down poor guy at least he didn't he didn't die for those wards so yep <laughs> he, has, he, has that, he has that at least and well looks like void not going full troll yet he's gone for the maelstrom almost certainly gonna be in Mjolnir here it's probably the best item on him in chronosphere i would say so probably the right choice and well josh got a dd rune ready to go they might try and take a fight in the top lane but it looks like quintet's on the run and they don't want anything to do with this but oh. mambo may not let the uh timber get away with this yep in two seconds we have a dream coin yep there is he'll pop it just for, just for him just for you, Timbersaw, and well, he's taking some deeps. He's gonna be pretty dead. Yeah. Yep. Kill secured. Brief fire. Easy. John needs his kills, man. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, it's not looking good at the moment for Quintet. They're so scared of all our team fight. I don't know. Like the problem is, you have to take the fight. As there's there's no point in doing anything. The problem is, as long as that Chrono is is up, like. You will just lose that fight. That's the problem against Void and the Void not yet 16. That's the good part. I mean, this is not a level three Chrono, but it will be soon. Like if he gets, I don't know, in the, in the next fight. Oh, I think AA was just found by the DK. There's a Dragon Tail. He's interrupted. So, yeah, I don't know. He will get his. Yeah, that's that's all he can do. Bamboo. I don't know. They play around with him at the moment. I don't know. I think this was the fight for who's getting the last hit. Yeah. The DK doesn't have a. With the Blink Dagger build and a point boost, he just doesn't have a ton of right click damage, so it actually does take him longer to kill people than you would think, but even so, I mean, yeah, they is just very squishy here, and well, Timber's not going to try and make some sort of something happen here, but, I mean, what's he supposed to do? He's just level 8 right now, doesn't even have max rolling death yet, oh, 2 year the Chrono. Plus, of course, the Witch Doctor ultimate. So With the Naganims, oh my god, oh, the Shadow Shaman. <laughs> he just walked near that Chronosphere and just died, oh my goodness. <laughs> This is uh. the the power of Eosin with the Arganum Scepter, easy going. I mean, Ice Blast will come out for some harass damage, actually hitting on all four, but yeah, they could go high crown. I don't see anything stopping them, to be honest, and yeah, I don't know, Quintet, by the time they respawn, I mean, the low cooldown on the Chronosphere is just ridiculous. By now, 30 seconds, so they could go soon again. Ancient Apparition, just a casualty here. Like this blink dagger is doing really work as an initiation. I really like it. So they would go slowly high crown, 15 seconds on the chronosphere, then he would be ready for another combination. The ultimate of the witch dog, well, a bit longer than that cooldown, but I mean they still have the poison nova, they still have the orb and everything. Oh, or he just get hexed and hit with an arrow, so this might be their best chance to kill him off. He's got that Mjolnir on him though, so having a hard time finishing him off. He's got Chrono back up with that Aganims and he's just gonna find more and more kills. Oh, yeah, yeah. Three kills for him in the Chronosphere. And, well, Purge. Uh, Purge. You you are the martyr of this team. He actually might make it out this time. Corey just trying to go ham on these uh, Pandaren Brewmasters, uh, Brewlings, to try and save his buddy. Purge still on the run. Can he make it they out? They Purge. Purge. Oh, he's, <laughs> oh, no. ah, he's oh, going down. He had it. Oh, All the God. hate on Purge. Like, seriously. Everything on Purge. Like, they oh, didn't care. I mean, this was pretty much a GG. But they didn't care. It was like... Purge or nothing. This is this is a this is a pub game against Purge. Just like, don't care if you win the game. Just just kill Purge. Just kill him over and over again. That's all you're really there for. But, well, they'll get the set of racks. And I mean, this oh, game's pretty. The DK actually might be in trouble. Is this a level two ultimate? No, it's still level one ice blast. This is not enough at all to get him shattered. But they're going back. So this game is getting prolonged, but to be honest, I have no idea for what reason. I mean, there are 15 kills I had, like having a glimpse at, yeah, the XP. I think now they're about accurate. We are heading towards the 20k advantage in experience. Now 15k in gold, and then oh, there's a... Corey? Nice he's an arrow, but Corey, they can't but kill him. He's so tanky. Yep. I mean, the Chronosphere, he's like 10 mana short. He is already on his uh, intelligence PTs, but now he would have the Chrono, but of course no time walk. So, in the worst case scenario, he could have just turned around. And by the way, little deja vu, we have Sexy Bamboo again with an invisibility rune. That might, of course, go in their favor. If he scouts out something really nice, and then Cory coming in with a nice chrono. Let's see what's happening so far. He doesn't find anything, because he's they're around the rush pit. 
He's got this Dagon too now. If he finds the support, he can also just straight up kill them. Yep. Oh, he was in. As you found, okay, there's like a little ice water. It's just harassed, but... Well, I don't know. I really don't know. Quintet really thinks... Oh, yeah. He's going here for exactly what you said. Easy kill on the Ancient Apparition with a level 2 Dagon and, of course, Waning Rift as well as the Orb. Easy kill for him. Now they have to fall back again. I mean, the Master Open Wards also just level 1. They go for some split push at least here on the Brewmaster, but till they reach high ground, that's... I don't know. It's not even worth to mention. The Panda is already going out. The Marana, I guess, will follow pretty much soon. And yeah, Sapphire, they reached the high ground. Now already, like, hitting that tower. Oh, an arrow. Nice range grave kill. Yep, and well, they start smacking away in this purge, building up this army of wards. And well, I heard a dragon tail somewhere. Josh yep. is stunning people. <laughs> he in the jumped bottom in lane. there and went directly out afterwards. Oh, there's the brewmaster ultimate. Can actually find anything. They will find Cory with a with the boulder toss, and the uh, cycle actually throws his purge away from the arrow. But purge, you're always purge. <laughs> purge is down. Now the game can continue. So, yeah, pretty there's much. the Chronosphere. And, well, and now everybody else dies. It's gonna be another power. 5 for 1 with Purge being the only casualty again. <laughs> yeah, everything is good. Purge, uh, Purge. Purge. <laughs> okay, that's also good a good old one. Purge. Purge. <laughs> purge oh, is down, goodness. and Marana uses the buyback, but hell, what is she supposed to do? Brewmaster using the buyback. Who else has buyback, actually? No one else. This, these are the only buybacks, but then again, uh, there's a nice little stun on the Dragon Knight, but look at it. At his HP region at the moment, there's level two Voodoo Restoration of the Brewmaster. Maledict on him. He's so dead. Like there's no way he can do anything. Ice Blast also level one, and now oh we have a go already on the Marana. But Corey, oh, oh, he's hexed. It's buying some time, and there are the wards. Now the shackles coming out. Do they get a kill on Corey? There's a stun as well, and he's finally going down. This is a godlike streak ended. So pretty nice gold. Not that it changes the outcome of the game, but Sexy Bamboo also going down and out. Oh, there's a buyback on the void. Range buyback, I guess. But, yeah. Rasta, you don't want to go against that Dragon Knight, but now Blink Dagger is of course disabled and Mirana, double star storm, and oh well. This Chakram is going to do a lot of damage, and there's also a dominating streak, but all that happened after they lost their uh, Rax. So, for Sephir, it's just, I don't know. It's just yeah, kind of a formality the rest at this is just point. I, yeah, duty calls. It, mm -hmm, pretty much. And well, Corey did buy back and not able to really do a whole lot with it now because his team is dead. But I guess I'll just go start pushing bottom out because that's pretty yeah, much all that's... they have left to do. Oh my god. The refresher is there. Like, easy, easy going. I, I knew this is going to happen. Like, if you have, like, what, 6, 7k uh, gold advantage, then sure. Why not go in for the refresher? What the fuck build? This is the pop stomp build which you would play on a void, which like every pub is winnable with this. So yeah. I mean, we when have... you're this far ahead, I mean, how, there's no way to deal with a void with the Mjolnir and Refresher Aghanim's ultimate. It's like, it's just way too much damage, so. Yep. It's, I don't know, it may not be the always, not, may not be the not troll choice, but it's also not like a terrible idea. I mean, of it'll still work it, Of course it's fine. a troll choice. I mean, the same with, uh, say it, with Discardi on the DK. I mean, hell. But they initiate on Cory, and now the question is do they get him down? Oh my god, the Chrono comes out. Oh, he just gets stunned up in there, actually. He gets wow. killed off. Verona with the arrow, and there's a cold feet in there as well, I guess. He was disabled somehow, and he doesn't have buyback right now, so Purge, once again, will be the one to go down here. And, well, Cory playing a little too aggressively, and without Jod helping tank on the front lines and not finding the Chrono initiation by himself. Yep, absolutely. So, I, I, no buyback there. Like, Corey has to sit out for quite a while. The DK is sitting here. Maybe he's one of. Yeah, he wants to find something. And there he actually goes on the Marana stunned. Leap is come, actually coming out. Let's look at the ultimate. The ultimate of the Witch Dog. Taking already the AI. Now Mirana is getting a tick. But yeah, there, the Scotty DK. Oh my goodness. So. There's the GG. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Let's watch like, Jaw ja build everything except damage on Dragon Knight, and it's just like he's just tickling people with this Scotty, but yeah, they do call the GG. <laughs> and there comes the Dream Coil on the tier 2 tower. Wonderful. Sexy Bamboo. Don't let it run away. 
Oh well, this this was like the end. The reload was almost not really worth it. Like it ended really in a, in a troll game, but it was still fun. Anyway, guys, this is a two-game series. That means this was game number one. Sapphire is taking, of course, here the win very convincingly. So game two will be up in just a couple of minutes. I hope. And I really hope that the servers are stable as well for it, so no more delays. Game 2 in 